So I'm just going to do a short video on um, basically highlighting the incompatibility between major brands of brush cutters, line trimmers, um, and then how you can sort of look for the right bits and pieces and actually make something work um, with the move to a lot of battery tools. Uh, a lot of small two-stroke um, line trimmers and brush cutters are basically just getting thrown out by people that either can't be bothered to fix them or people who are going electric. Uh, so pretty much everything you see here I've picked up either free or super cheap. Uh, so this hedge trimming attachment um, was at our, we've got a shop down by the dump. So before you get to the dump there's a shop there where you can drop all this stuff off. They take it and then they sell it cheap back to the public. Uh, so I picked up this hedge trimming attachment for about, I think it was like 5 or $10. Uh, unfortunately it's got a 7 spline drive on it. Uh, and nothing else I have has a 7 spline drive. Both these still brush cutter and, hit, uh, and line trimmer, they're a, a square drive. And then I picked up this quoll cut, or what's left of it, uh, off Marketplace for free. And this part's obviously broken, uh, but that's a square drive. And so I've held onto this for quite a while trying to work out what I could use it for. And basically the solution was staring me in the face. Um, it's got a seven spline that goes into the motor. However, it had a square drive uh, for the head. And then what I've worked out is you can actually just take this out, spin it round and put it back in the tube. That allows me to have the square drive at this end, uh, which is compatible with the still line trimmer there. And then I've got the seven spline down here, which will then slot into this hedge trimmer attachment. And obviously you can go and buy all this kind of stuff, but it's pretty expensive and that's not really what I'm into. So ideally what I'd like to do is, is to get another power head and have it set up as a, um, as a hedge trimmer all the time. Um, I did look at converting the brush cutter over because I don't really use that very often but the trigger arrangement's not not in a good place. It'd be better off being like this one here. So anyway, I'll get the camera set up and we'll put it all together and then see how well it works. So just by undoing those uh, few bolts on the bottom that have got a Torx drive, you can slide this whole attachment out. Uh, there's the, the end of the square drive sticking out there. So we'll leave that set up um, as is. going to need this handle or uh, this other bracket and then while we put it like this I'm going to take this out and spin it around so that way our square drives at this side that goes into the motor I'll take this handle off you might need that Slide this in. And it's important to make sure it goes in all the way. Now there 
is a locking hole already in there, but I'm not sure if it's actually going to line up. It probably won't, because it would just be far too easy. I don't think it will, um, but once we get using it, uh, I'll mark where that hole is, and then um, I'll end up filling a new hole there. Now that it's on, we can tighten these back up. Locking bolt back in, but we're not going to force it because I don't expect it's going to line up with the hole. Although the way it's going in, I actually think it has lined up, and that was just a bit of good luck. Already loosened this, and so in there's our spline drives. But hard to see it's too dark, uh, but that's a seven spline. So that's all in there now. A couple of main points. Uh, you need to make sure that these shafts are the same diameter so that they fit into the handle assembly. Uh, these are 26 mil. Um, so there's four uh, fasteners that hold the shaft in there and, and hold it in firm. And then that one actually locks through a, a locating hole. I haven't made that locating hole. Uh, the danger is if that goes in too far, it can actually interfere with the shaft. Um, so I'm just going to leave that a little bit loose at this stage uh, and then we'll work out whether that's interfering or not as we start it. And then with this side, again this is the locking nut but there's no hole there so I've just got that snugged up. Um, once we've got it running and all together then I'll put the hole in and tighten it all up. And so now we've got our still uh, motor on a I think it was a quoll cut, which is a Chinese um, copy uh, shaft and drive assembly, which is square drive now at that end, seven spline, and now at that end, and then going to our whatever hedge trimmer attachment that's from. I know, let's start it up and go cut some stuff. So you'll notice that the uh, head trimming attachment didn't turn, so what that means is that the shaft inside hasn't gone in far enough engaged. Uh, so we're just going to strip it down and just make sure we get it in that last little bit.
Okay, so what I've just worked out is uh, when the shaft is pushed all the way back into the power head, uh, the shaft is flush with the end of this. However, we need about that much sitting proud in order to engage into this uh, power head, uh, the hedge trimmer unit. So what I'm going to do is cut whatever that amount is off. What's that, about an inch? 25 mil, something like that. We'll cut that off, and then that way it can be set all the way back into the power head. We'll have about 20 mil sitting proud, and then uh, we should be able to put that in. It'll all tighten up together. So let's give that a try and see if that works. Um, the other thing is, I wouldn't want to cut my proper still shaft down because obviously I still want to be able to use it for trimming grass and things however because this is just a random one um, I'm not too worried about cutting 20 mil off the aluminium right so I've cut that uh, 20 mil off the end uh, now we're gonna put the shaft back in with one hand. So now you can see that that's all the way in, uh, so it's engaged in the clutch. Now we've got that 20 mil sticking out. Right, that seems to be working reasonably well, so uh, I haven't put any grease in the cutting head yet, so I'll chuck some in that now and then we'll go cut some edges.
Righto, so that's it. Uh, finished, put away. As you can see, it, the end folds up quite well. Um, trim the hedges pretty good, so I'm happy with it. I've pulled out a good result, and didn't really cost me much at all. Anyway, thanks for watching.